Sometimes before you can integrate using inverse trig rules, you first have to complete the square to make it fit the pattern. In this video, I will show you how to do that. To decide whether or not you need an inverse trig rule, consider the degree of the numerator versus the degree of the denominator. In this case, the numerator has degree 0 because there are no variables. The denominator has degree 2 because x squared is the highest exponent. If the degree of the denominator beats the numerator by 2 or more, you will probably need an inverse trig function. In this case, the denominator degree wins by 2. So you should expect to use an inverse trig function. These are the three inverse trig rules that you need to memorize. The question is, which one do I need to use for this problem? It's actually hard for me to tell right now. I'm pretty sure we won't be using the arctangent because the arctangent does, doesn't have a square root in the denominator, and I see the square root. But in this form, I, I really can't guess whether it's going to be arc sine or arc secant. I'm going to need to use completing the square to rewrite this and make it more clear what I'm dealing with. You sort of know that you need to complete the square when there is no constant. There should be a constant here, but instead we see this 4x. So let's take this entire expression and complete the square. Before we begin, this doesn't work well when the leading coefficient is negative. So let's start by taking a negative 1 outside of parentheses. So that's going to leave on the inside x squared minus 4x. And I'm going to leave a space inside of the parentheses. Completing the square means finding a very specific and special number to be the third term of this trinomial. How do I find the special number? Listen to this phrase. I'm going to do half the middle squared. What do I mean by that? So this is the middle, so I'm going to take this negative 4 and I'm going to divide it by 2. That's half the middle. I need to do half the middle squared, so I'm going to take this now and I will square it. The result is going to give me the third term that I need. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So that is the special third term. However, you can't just go adding in numbers willy-nilly like this. By adding a 4 into here, I have changed the value of the expression. That's, uh, that's not okay. So I need to immediately cancel out this change with a minus 4. So this way I'm really adding nothing. So what's the point? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Whenever you complete the square using this process, the trinomial that you form will factor as the same binomial twice. So I'm going to take this trinomial and I'm going to factor it as a binomial times a binomial. All right, I'm bringing down the minus 4. Okay, and all of this is inside of an outer set of parentheses. I'm going to put brackets since I have, uh, I'm already using the parentheses. So this is what I have. So I'm factoring the trinomial x squared is x times x. I'm looking at the green 4. 4 is 2 times 2. And to make a negative 4 middle, I need negative 2 and negative 2. So I have x minus 2 squared. Let's, let's rewrite this part as x minus 2 to the second power. I'd really like to make this negative sign go away somehow. I don't, I don't like it. It doesn't fit any of my rules for my inverse trig functions. How do I make it go away? I'm going to use a shortcut right now, but then I'll go back and show you what I did. If I reverse this, all right, if I take this a minus b and I rewrite it as b minus a, if I, if I switch the order, that makes the negative sign go away. So I could rewrite this as 4 minus x minus 2 squared without the negative sign. Ta-da! So um, that's the shortcut, and I highly encourage you to use it. 
again, if I have a minus b, that's the same thing as negative parentheses b minus a, and that is a two-way street, okay? Uh, so on the other hand, if I have negative b minus a, and this is the situation I was in, if I want to make the negative sign go away, I can write that as a minus b. All right, now why? Why is this working? What did I really do? Okay. Um, so take this part. I'm just going to write this off to the side, a little side lesson. I had negative uh, bracket x minus 2 squared minus 4. What's really happening is I am distributing the negative sign. So if I do that, I'm going to have negative x minus 2 squared. And then a negative times negative is a positive, so that's positive 4. And addition is commutative, so there's nothing to stop me from swapping these two terms around. So uh, I have a positive 4 now in the front, and my negative parentheses x minus 2 squared can go to the right. And ta-da! That's how I ended up with this. But I don't have to show all of these steps. I can just use that little rule that negative a minus b is the same thing as positive b minus a. That's it for completing the square. I can now replace negative x squared plus 4x with 4 minus parentheses x minus 2 squared. And that's why I have this. I ask you again, which of these three inverse trig rules do you think will apply to problem number 38? In this form, I see that I have a constant minus the variable. So the arc sine formula also has the constant minus the variable. So this is the one we will use. Let's set up our u substitution. u will be whatever is inside of the parentheses here. So u is x minus 2. That means that u prime is just 1, which changes nothing. The a value will be the square root of this constant. So a is 2. Let's go ahead and make that substitution. I went ahead and put the 2 from the numerator out in front of the integral. Since the rule doesn't have a 2, it's just a 1. So now that's out of the way. Normally, I take a moment and say, I'm replacing dx with du over u prime. I didn't say that this time because u prime is 1, so I didn't need to write over u prime. At this point, this is a perfect match for the rule. So I'm go going to go ahead and, and just use this rule to integrate. So I see the arc sign. So I'm just going to start writing arc sign. And then it's u over a. Uh, but u is x minus 2. And a is 2. So this is u over a plus c. Don't forget that we have this 2 in front of the integral. I'm just going to bring that straight down. And that's it. This is the answer to number 38. I notice that number 42 has an x in the numerator. So will I need inverse trig at all on this problem? Let's investigate. The degree of the numerator is 1 because there's just x to the 1 power, there's 1x. The degree of the denominator is 4. That's the highest exponent. The denominator beats the numerator by 2 or more, right? It wins by 3. So that's a good indication that we will need inverse trig. However, I see this full-on trinomial under the radical. That doesn't fit any of the rules. So we will need to complete the square. I will start by rewriting this in standard form. Negative x to the fourth power plus 8x squared plus 9. Next, I do not like the fact that we have a negative leading coefficient, so I'm definitely going to bring that outside of parentheses. Well, I think I'll use a bracket because I know we'll have some more parentheses later. That's going to leave behind x to the fourth power minus 
8x squared uh, minus 9. I'm going to leave a space before the minus 9. I'll leave a gap so I can do my completing the square in that space. So how do I complete the square again? Remember the phrase half the middle squared. So this is the middle, is negative 8. Half of this would be negative 8 divided by 2. And then I'm going to square it. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So that means I'm going to put a plus 16 right here. But I cannot be adding 16 willy-nilly. I'm breaking all the rules. So I need to cancel this out immediately. Let me give myself a little bit more space. I need to cancel this out by immediately subtracting 16. All right, so I am really adding nothing. So I've completed the square, but I need to actually re rewrite it. I'm looking at this trinomial. By picking this number so carefully, I should be able to factor this trinomial as the same binomial twice. x to the fourth power will be x squared times x squared. 16 will be 4 times 4. See the negative sign on the middle term? I know it's going to be negative 4 and negative 4 because of that. Let's go ahead and combine the negative 16 and the negative 9 into negative 25. So this is the same as, oh, and all of this is in the brackets with the negative sign. So really, what I wanted to have was, all right, I've got negative, and uh, it's the same binomial twice. So I'm going to write x squared minus 4 squared minus 25. How can I get rid of the negative sign in the front? The shortcut is I can just switch these around, and the negative will disappear. So uh, if I put the 25 in the front, 25 minus x squared minus 4 squared, suddenly no more negative sign. So this expression is equivalent to the trinomial that was originally under the radical. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and set up our u substitution. The u will be whatever is inside of the parentheses being squared. So u is x squared minus 4. That means that u prime is going to equal 2x. What about the a value? a will equal 5 because a will be the square root of this constant. Let's rewrite using this substitution. So here is what I have so far. It's time to replace dx with du over u prime, which is 2x. And then I notice that we have an x in the numerator and this x in the denominator. These will cancel each other out. This 2 in the denominator can be brought out to the front as a 1 half. So I now have 1 half the integral of 1 over the square root of 25 minus u squared du. I almost forgot to ask which trig function you think we are dealing with. I see the constant minus the variable, and arc sine has the constant minus the variable. So there you go. We can now use this rule to integrate. So I see uh, arc sine u over a, so I'm going to write arc sine u over a. u is x squared minus 4, and a is 5. So this is arc sine u over a plus c. Don't forget that we have this one half in front of the integral, so I do need to bring that down. 
So this is the final answer for number 42.